My name is Diane Wilcox. I'm a nurse practitioner at the University of Connecticut. I care for patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. The following presentation will include information about chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and the costs for caring for those with COPD. COPD is a tremendous health concern in the United States. It's the third le leading cause of death. It's the fourth leading cause of a hospitalization and the third leading cause of readmission to the hospital within 30 days. COPD is not just a problem in the United States, however. It's highly prevalent in both the U.S. and worldwide. It's estimated that 12.7 million U.S. adults have been diagnosed with COPD. Approximately another 24 million have COPD but have not been diagnosed. Globally, approximately 64 million people have COPD. COPD is costly. A retrospective study looked at the costs of COPD care for those with commercial insurance in the United States. 37,000 patients were studied. Only 6% of those patients required hospitalizations, but hospitalization expenses comprised almost half of the health care dollars spent for COPD care. There are other costs associated with hospitalizations, which are the personal cost to patients and their families. These include a decrease in lung function, decrease in exercise capability, increased disability, and a decrease in quality of life. COPD refers to a group of diseases that affect the lungs. COPD is characterized by airflow limitations caused by airway inflammation and parenchymal or lung destruction. COPD is a progressive dis disease. There is decline in lung function over time. It is chronic. It cannot be cured, but the combination of medication and other therapies can lessen it, its effects. It's potentially preventable. Smoking prevention and smoking cessation can have a large impact on COPD. The s symptoms of COPD are felt every day, and they can include a chronic cough, with sputum production, dyspnea with exertion, wheezing, and chest tightness. When I was first diagnosed, I was scared to death. I thought I was going to die. And this changed my way of thinking. And you know, there's other people out there that, you know, have the same condition. And you know, you know you're not going to die. For some, with more advanced COPD, they experience something called exacerbations. An exacerbation is defined by the GOLD 2014 guidelines as an acute worsening of respiratory symptoms beyond normal day-to-day -day variations that leads to a change in medication. Commonly, COPD exacerbations are caused by respiratory viral illnesses. While many patients with exacerbations are treated as outpatients, some will require hospitalizations. This is still, an exacerbation is still prevent, potentially preventable by smoking cessation, flu and pneumococcal vaccinations, medication adherence, and correct inhaler technique. The typical patient you may care for with COPD is generally in their seventh decade of life, but can be as young as 40. They may have a history of cigarette smoking. Other risk factors for COPD include occupational exposure to things such as dust, chemical agents and fumes, indoor air pollution from burning of wood or coal for the purpose of cooking or heating, especially in, a poorly, in poorly ventilated homes, and potentially urban outside air pollution from automobiles. A patient with COPD may have a chronic cough with sputum production, progressive shortness of breath, especially with exertion, worsening symptoms associated with a respiratory infection, and female gender. It's been quite a number of years since I was diagnosed with COPD. Uh, I realized early in the game that there was something wrong. I knew I was prone to a lot of respiratory illnesses sometime, and it seemed I had bronchitis, colds every couple of months, and and I realized I was having a cold about every three months or so. And my myself, I knew that something was not right, and. I, you know, went to the doctor, 
after a series of tests and whatnot, um, we, we came to realize it was COPD. There are gender differences in COPD. It used to be considered a man's disease. The prevalence of COPD in men has remained stable, however, over the last two decades, whereas the prevalence for COD, COPD has been increasing in women. The increase in COPD for women is felt to be related to the increase in women smoking following World War II. There are other gender differences related to deaths from COPD. Over the last decade, women have been dying from COPD at a higher rate than men. In summary, COPD is a prevalent disease. It potentially affects as many as 24 million Americans. It's a progressive lung disease. It's characterized by airflow limitations and parenchymal lung, lung destruction. Exacerbations are a common occurrence in advanced disease. COPD is costly. It's costly because of hospitalizations as well as rehospitalizations within 30 days, but also has a human cost. See the module called COPD and Health Reform for more information on hospital readmissions.